This is Drew Spence from the Dynamic Universe and Digital Art Live. In one of the previous videos we had done, we looked at installing scripts to use inside of Daz Studios, and those were built natively for Daz Studio, so they came with installers, and we could have installed them directly from the smart content pane. In this particular case, we're gonna look at installing some of the free scripts that you might find across the internet. So we take a pop over to one of the sites uh, found on the Daz forum. We have a list of free Daz Studio scripts and plugins. Richard Hasseltine is making a list and directory of different scripts that are free. So we're taking a look at some extra resources that can be used in Daz Studio. While scrolling along the names of scripts, we had come across a pretty cool one that can get characters to turn towards each other or look at each other. And that was a free script that we found in this list. Once we found the item in the script, we clicked on it. It takes us to this actual page where the script is uh, linked to directly. And it was called MCJ's Face to Face, a script to precisely pose two heads so they face. And it basically shows a quick rundown that characters who weren't facing each other can now be turned to face each other, either one character or both. So that sounds like a pretty useful script to have, that you want to have two characters face each other. All right. We click on that, and that takes us to his actual uh, scripting download site. And we have another picture of the script, and we have a link to the script, and it tells you how to install the script, which we're going to do ourselves. And it shows that it comes with an interface. There's a video primer showing you, and then we have the download button. So I click the download button. It opens up a window to install. We're going to put it, and it's going to come in as a zipped file, and I download it. Once downloaded, it appears as a zipped file in a folder that I picked. I'll right click on that and I'll unzip it. Inside the folder, we've got the scripts. He's got a license for fair usage, how we're going to use it. And here are the scripts themselves. So here we have that. Now we had talked about inside of Daz Studio. Let's take a look at this real quick. Inside of Daz Studio, we talked about underneath your edit and your preferences, content, and then content directory manager. We showed the current set of where you have your Daz Studio assets. And this is basically telling Daz where all your stuff is on your computer. And I have my own library that when I chose to install Daz, I picked a separate site. And I've said in class a few different times that we do not want to keep our, our directory of DAS assets on the C drive, right? We all kind of know from having computers for a while that C drives get corrupted. Sometimes you want to install the newest version of something. That's one of the drives that takes the most work out, so it's usually the one that you replace the most. So we usually have a C drive and a backup of other drives. Side note that the DAS content is always available to you from downloading. So we're really concerned mostly with archive stuff or even free stuff we've gotten off of the internet or in other places or even other stores. Or older items that might not be able to uh, still be, be uh, downloaded or bought inside the store if they retire an item. So you'll always have it in your general library, but it won't always be easy to find either in your smart content or anywhere else. So sometimes you want to take manual control of where you download and keep some of your items for Dad Studio. And in that case, we would use this menu. If I pick a library, you can see that I can edit it, remove it. You can make a new content uh, library location where you find your stuff. And all of these are here where I have my Daz stuff. User format, some of this is some of the folders that I created myself where I store some of my third-party items that I picked up over time. But these are the different folders, and it's in your content directory manager under the content tab and we got here from our edit and preferences sometimes con folders are kind of hard to find but it was under content that's how we got here and that decides where my items are found what i also like to do is create a desktop shortcut so on my desktop i will have a dash directory desktop shortcut that opens up the folder directly so I can always get access to it and find the things that I use often. And we'll see one of my libraries linked here. You'll see uh, my runtime, the ubiquitous runtime folder. Textures are here. And in this is a folder called scripts. 
If I open that up, I'll see a bunch of scripts that I've gotten. Some of them are installed from DAS. Some of these are actually just my own manual install. And this same vendor seems to have already had a script that I grabbed from him. This flipped the normals of an object. So this was a script that must have solved a problem I was having when I was working on something. So that's our list of scripts. And that would be a good place to store his script that we just downloaded. So we'll take a look at it. Here it is, the folder, scripts. And again, here is the same name of the same vendor. I'm gonna take his new set of scripts. I could have dragged and dropped, just so you know, for, for simpleness, I could have just dragged this folder over, but we're showing an actual really heavy manual. My hands are on everything here. So I'm actually gonna grab these files. I'm gonna copy and paste them here. And now they appear in my library underneath the scripts. These show up. So let's take a look at how these might work inside of Daz Studio. You recognize the smart content pane. This is where we have an internal engine that searches through our Daz library and finds the content that we've purchased in the store. And we can also install items from here. This is internally powered inside of the Daz Studio environment way to manage your content. A more direct way is to actually use the content manager. That is a separate tab. This brings up that same library we showed you before. Let's show that again. It mimics my content manager directory. This is the same list blown out that I can search. So this list that I'm controlling here shows up under this pane. And this is allowing me to look at that same folder I had the shortcut to. You remember we opened that up and we installed the script. This is that same folder. If we go backwards, we're back into that same folder. See the name 2017 Daz library. This is that same folder being blown out directly inside the Daz Studio interface. And we're gonna find it in that same location. Remember, that was under scripts. And underneath scripts, it was McCasual. And we have his script here. Face to face, face to face. I like this one, Daz Studio one. That looks like the groovy one. And you see the other script we showed you before, reversing those normals. But here we have it. In the instructions somewhere, it tells you to select the two nodes. Uh, specify a range, and then we get them to start posing. So let's figure out how to do that. It says select the two head nodes. So we're gonna try to grab a head node on this character. I hit control and I have the head node of the second character. So I've grabbed the heads of both characters. Side note that I, I, I said in my class there were three approaches to most of the creating scenes in Daz. The three approaches would be either A, to do it for real. If you have a picture in your mind of two characters sitting in a bar, you create the bar, you create the entire scene, you put the two characters there, you dress them, and now you have physically created that movie set. We discussed this approach in, uh, in the class that we just completed, that the approach is to create the actual scene itself, the set. That's the movie making approach to creating in Daz Studio. I build a set, I place my characters, I set up an actual physical existing scene. The second approach is photography, where I only need it to look like it exists. That is the second level of Daz Studio use is to go to photography, where if it looks correct, you will think it's correct. And third is only to fool the viewer which means something doesn't need to be there. It doesn't need to be something that you actually bought in the dad store. Long as I can get the person looking at what I've created to believe it worked or it was there or I did have it, it's enough. That's when we start to talk about post work. So if you understand it, rudimentary, you're gonna build your entire set. Second level, only worrying about how it appears. Third layer, just to make sure the reader is convinced. The person looking at your art is convinced you did something, whether you did it or not. In this particular case, when I pull out, <clears throat> we did a little bit of a combination. This is an actual 3D set that I built. Now, you'll think it's a full bar. They could be other characters. It's a giant set. But this is a philosophical approach to working inside of Daz Studio. I just built a small set, and it looks like it should have been part of something else, but it's enough to sort of, you know, get me where I'm going as far as building a scene. Photography is the second layer. 
it looks as if these two characters are engaged in a conversation and the final render gives you that appearance. But in reality, this character is looking off and he's not actually even looking at the other female character. He's engaged in a conversation. So by using my camera angles, I gave you the appearance that these two were engaged in a conversation. And that's from promo art for Riversoft's Ultimate Zero product. It looked as if it fooled the person looking at my artwork or picture that they were looking at each other. Now, if I were to work on a narrative or even choose a different camera angle, my work is exposed that these two characters aren't indeed facing each other. And that's what we would need to fix in a subsequent scene if I'm doing a conversation and now they're talking and now I've got to really spend my time jigging around with his head, trying to get it to turn the right way, trying to figure out what angle should it really be at, trying to get his eyes to line up with her eyes. It becomes a lot of work and this is one of the things that we used to battle inside of Dad's studio. And sometimes it gave characters that lifeless look on their face because they weren't really focused on anything and their eyes were just going off in a general direction. And sometimes that was some of the some of the things that were a tough knock. But we have tools to, to uh, deal with that now. One of them is this freebie script that we came across. We're going to get these characters to face each other. So as the instructions say, grab the head node. I've done that. His head, her head. And now we're going to execute this script and see what it says. It says pick an animation range, 0 to 30. Uh, change either both poses or just one of their poses. And there's a head tilt. So let's just pick an animation range. Let's have both characters turn their heads and let's use a little bit of tilt. Uh, maybe we don't need, uh, we'll let the tilt happen. We're not really sure. And we'll play around with this and see what we get. And then we hit do it. And we got it to work. He looked over at her, her head turned. And we have a script that actually helps us much quicker. We installed it manually and we've got a script working. As a side note, if I like this script a lot or a suite of scripts even, I could take both of these scripts, but we'll just take the one that we liked right now and I create a custom action. If I create a custom action, it's going to want to put this script in my script shortcut menu. And the sub menu, let's just call this... Uh, some that we're going to remember, because I'm not going to remember the name of this vendor. So we'll just call it face-to-face -face and keep it keep it simple. Face-to-face -face is the name of it. And I'm not going to use the vendor name. I'm not going to do anything else. I think face-to-face -face is close enough. And once I hit accept, it tells me that I have a new script in my menu. And under face-to-face -face is this script. So from now on, I don't have to worry about the content manager or looking for the script or remembering where it was. From anywhere in my Dash Studio interface, I can just grab that script, which is under Face to Face. And now I've got my two characters to turn to each other. And I've installed a free script and gotten some mileage out of it. Well, let's propose or suppose that I, I want something a little bit more powerful with a lot more options, something really heavy and robust. Now we start to get to the mastery part and we look at heavyweight items. This is look at me pose control. This is the second version of it from River Soft Art, who also just released Ultimate Zero that I did the video for showing uh, installing that script. So this is a heavyweight solution that goes, you know, much further and beyond the functionality of a free script. But this is also part of the, the DAS mastery part where you want full control over your process and your creative endeavor. This has sliders for eyes, chest, head, and neck. This makes the characters pose. You can turn more than just the, the head, neck, and shoulders. You have other scripts in there to look at a camera. You can control the amount that the character looks. This is a heavyweight solution. You can look at that, where a character can look at an object. You can look at each other. You can have how much each character turns. So again, once we start to talk about mastery, we start to talk about using tools that push the engine and your abilities up a few notches. And it's not as simple as just, you know, getting the rudimentary thing to happen. We want precise control. And of course, that's one of the C's of being an artist is having a control over every aspect of your art. This is no different. So now we want to have something happen. Let's let's start to experiment. So the Look At Me product uh, is installed in Daz Studio the same way. It's a double click install like you've done for all your other products. 
Also, it can be manually installed, copying those same steps the way I showed you in the other video. But most of these products come with a suite of their own. Like if we just take a quick look at Ultimate Zero, don't forget Ultimate Zero had a way to install custom actions from its own menu. So when we clicked on uh, install custom actions of its own, it placed it here and we had all the features of Ultimate Zero here right at a button click away. So once you start to, to work with officially licensed products in the data store, they're going to be more robust. They're going to be simpler to use. They're going to have more features. They're going to install automatically. We're not going to be worrying about what folder is what and where. It's just going to install for you. That's some of the benefits of using an actual officially DAS licensed product because it's built to work inside of DAS instantly off the bat. But I also don't want to uh, dissuade you from using many of the free resources out here, saving some money. If you need something to do a very precise activity, it might be even just quicker and easier to grab a free script and get it going. But we're looking at that. Look at me. I've already have installed and have used it. Here is the look at me. And out of all of the features that it does, I've picked the ones that I go to all the time. And I've got to look at camera, look at each other, look at the at, and look into my eye. So now let's imagine I have this scene. I've got the characters here. Perhaps this character has just said something witty and funny and want to do a, a sight gag of this character looking at us and making a funny response here. So the joke would be the first scene was them talking, that far shot we showed you, we got close, this character spoke, and then this one's gonna have a response moment where they're gonna look at us. So I grabbed the character Giovanni. One of the benefits of using an actual uh, powerful script like this is that we don't have to select the head anymore. I can just grab anything that indicates that's the character we're talking about. I go to my scripts, I go to look at me too, and I'm gonna pick a look at the camera. And if I had a camera selected here, it would be that camera. But the script is powerful enough to know it means me. Look at me and where I'm looking. So I execute it. I get my choices. Head bend, head twist, amount of head side to side, uh, how much his eyes move. I want everything to be 100%. Like, I, I want this to happen. What's nice is there is a preview button. So I can preview the script. And then before I execute it, I can choose what I want. And I can update it. I can play with these sliders. I hit preview again. It's going to update. Let's try to find something a little bit less extreme. So as you can see, it's affecting all the different parts. And if I wanted to make it a little bit more of a goofy expression, that's another powerful benefit is that you get a preview. So before I execute, I can sort of see what I'm going to get. And it's not just hit it and see what happens but I get to play around with it. And just moving them randomly, I kind of think this is a funny look. And if he's saying something here, he can really capture a good moment. I put, I can reset if I don't like it, um, but I'm gonna accept this as it is. And now it's executed. My character has turned towards the camera. I put a word balloon here and it, it is funny that she said something clever. He looks to us and he says a response and I've got my work. That's really the simplest and most direct way of taking charge of your script menu is to install third-party content or use the, the huge suite of powerful options inside of DAS Studio. And again, everyone always asks me, what was that thing you showed? It's called Look At Me 2, there's also a one, but two uh, expands. I did discuss it with the vendor uh, when he had made Look At Me 1, I asked him if he could expand it and also start to control some of the upper body and get more than just the head and neck to turn. And of course, this vendor always goes the full distance. And now we've got all these, these controls and features, which again is good because as we talked about the artistic part of your mastery, it's going to be pushing your tool set a little bit further so that we can do more and have more control. And we're still concerned with time where we don't want to spend a lot of time struggling or worrying about technical uh, challenges. We just want to get right to our art. You want to remove the DAS Studio tool from the bridge that it is between our creativity and the final art that we create. I'm Drew Spence. This is the Dynamic Universe. Uh, we're in the middle of a 12-week course. This is one of the questions we had blown open about installing third-party scripts. I thank you for your support. Digital Art Live, Daz Studio.